Well, welcome guys. Now, despite that M4 motorway noise, this is a venue guide for the Reading and District Motelands venue. Now, Motelands is a really, really feature-filled and food-rich lake with a lot of natural food. And one species for myself that is synonymous with is tench. Now, despite the motorway noise, I can assure you that all fades into insignificance when you sat down focusing on such a nice looking mature gravel pit and you're connected to one of the lakes double figure tench. Now myself I've had them to £10 on leisure and £9 on float. Now it's a second generation gravel pit, you've got a nice marginal shelf, the fish do love to patrol the marginal shelf and it can be really good to fish a sliding waggler setup, fish lift method as well or use a drift beater setup or float leisure. That said, fish come to float and leisure. I would say leisure is the more easier option, but myself, I personally like to fish on float and on leisure. It's real, I get a real enjoyment out of fishing this venue. It's, a, it's not an easy venue by any, any small margin of the imagination. You know, it can be quite tricky. As I say, there's a lot of natural food, bloodworm beds, can be weedy. I would say to most people, you know, if you're gonna fish it, give it a rake in first. They love all types of baits. I do well on casters, maggots, worms, and bread. Very underused bait, very underused on this particular lake as well. And I've done great on fishing bread flake on the float. Now, that said, you've got quite a head of different fish in here. You've got perch, you've got pike. It's a good winter venue for the pike angler and predator angler, but you've also got rudd. There's some roach, but mainly rudd few bream, not quite as many as there was back in the early 2000s, but those that are in here are quite nice looking. There's a, a low stock of carp. Now I've fished the venue on and off since 2003-2004 and in that time I've probably only been smashed up around three times and definitely by carp, but so it, is, it does have carp but it is low stock. Big head of perch, there are some actually decent perch in here as well. Now it is a deep venue, um, depths can go up to as high as 12 and a half to 13 feet in places. And although some anglers would say when it comes to hot spots on the lake, the motorway bank swims are the be all and end all. Now, yes, they are decent, but myself, all swims I've caught from uh, where I'm filming this at the moment is on the back end of the lake where there's a channel which connects the larger lake which is Phil Lagoon or Amy's Big Pit to those who remember the name used for it and that channel connects the two lakes although it is sealed and shut off there is a water channel there now this back area of the lake can be quite productive now although the tench do move on the wind it has got to be a constant change in wind for them to move now as I say you've got a marginal shelf you've got numerous areas where there's decent gravel bars or upturned egg box bottoms where there's gravel bars that go up and down quite quite undulating and they can be good areas to target but as I say some anglers they like to fish the motorway bank I like the motorway bank but personally I've also quite happily fished and caught off of I would say around about 80% of the other swims now so far this particular season the um, club have done a good thing and that is opened up quite a lot of the bank so made it a lot more accessible there's a, quite a lot more swims than there was in the past now going back onto tactics helicopter rigs with a feeder does work personally i like to use just a simple short hook link running leisure setup and um, fish a mesh bag with my maggots and my casters and then either use fake popped up maggot and caster on one rod and worms on the other now silverfish as you're getting on late into the year or into summer itself getting out of spring they can be a bit of a nuisance if you are trying to primarily target the tench. Now there's two schools of thought with that. Change baits, don't use worms, don't use maggots, or as they are expensive, bring a few gallons of maggots down and try and feed through the small fish. Personally, when it gets like that, I like to change to small boilies, 10, 12 millimeter, usually sweet fruity baits, tutti fruity boilies, um, ester fruit, ester berries, uh, boilies. Um, not that you can get ester berry these days, unfortunately, but you can roll them yourself and come up with quite a good recipe. But as I say, sweet boilies, pineapple, tutti frutti, esterberry, cranberry, plum, sweet baits, they go down well, but 
keeping to a nice small size, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter sizes. Now, ground bait wise, myself, I like to use a very light amount of particle. They can get quite preoccupied on this water if you over bait, so I try to temper it based on how I feel the fish are feeding. It is a moody venue. It is one that takes time to get to understand like a lot of lakes, but if you stick at it, as you've seen also in the footage that I've shown from the pictures, there is some wonderful, wonderful looking tench to target. And it is a venue that I do feel, you know, it's very close to my heart as a, um, you know, younger lad fishing with my father on here. It's um, got a lot of history for me and in my opinion on the Reading and District portfolio from a tench angler's perspective, it is one of those gems that it could do with a few more anglers fishing it so it could be kept an eye on more. It's unkept, unkempt, it's overgrown, it's feature filled, it's got lovely margin cover where the marginal shelf is as well so you've got areas where you've got trees hanging over the water, they've got areas where there's nice snags, boughs going across and where the fish can just patrol close in. Now typically for myself, although you can fish it at night and it's on the general and on the bronze ticket with Reading and District, although you can fish it at night, for myself I've never done any good at night. Early mornings, all the way through the day and evening time. Now for myself, roasting hot conditions through the day and I found them, if there's a bit of breeze on the water I found it to feed good. Now there is, they are impeccable, I can't stress that enough. The tench in the here are dark, that old looking fish and um, they're rugged and they're right characters, you know. But once again, you've got a lot of natural food, there's a lot of water snails, there's bloodworm beds, there's a heck of a lot of food for them to feed on and not necessarily take much notice of your bait. So it's one of those venues that I would bait sensibly, I would definitely rake it, although these last few years, due to the uh, treatment of the water by the sailing club in Phil Lagoon, it tends to push into here the treatment that they've used on there and it does kill some of the weed off but even then I would err on the side of caution and give your swim a little bit of a rake. The best thing with that is you're stirring the bottom up, you're getting the fish feeding and you're not putting any ground bait in. Many times I've come down, I've raked, I've, I'll fish one rod over each air, raked area and I'll just use a mesh bag of maggots hooked on with the worm or maggots with casters just after I've raked, say give it half an hour and I've had double takes, I've had takes straight away and that's really the nice thing, you're not putting too much in. As I say, it's one of those walks where they can become preoccupied. You don't need special rigs, heli rigs will do you fine, simple running rigs with short hook links. What I would say is not always fish too far out, keep in mind that the marginal shelf is quite close in I wouldn't go more than, in summertime and late spring, I wouldn't go more than 25 yards, 20 yards, sometimes even a bit closer than that. But it is a wonderful looking venue as you've seen. It's, it's got so much to offer. It's got lovely, lovely features, beautiful areas where you can get tucked away. And to be honest, you rarely see another angle. Although, probably saying that after doing this video, there will be a few more anglers. But that's why I wanted to do the venue guide for this particular venue, because it is one that deserves to see more Reading and District members fishing it, and it's one that's worthy of any tench angler's time. Anyway, I hope that's given you a little insight into this lake. It's a beautiful, mature gravel pit with some wonderful tench. It's got rud, it's got perch, it's got sunbreed, it's got a very low stock of carp. It's got some cracking pike, so good at your winter times for your predatory fishing. And it's just a wonderful looking, unkempt, overgrown, beautifully deep venue. And the tench are amongst some of the best tench that I've caught in my opinion, for looks, for deep olive greens. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this short and sweet venue guide to Reading and District Anglian's Moatlands venue. And maybe I'll see you on the bank sometime and you'll give it your chances to actually come down and give it a fish and, you know, hopefully connect with a cracking tench or two.